It's Kevin O. We are backstage at Boots and Hearts with Mr. Tyler Joe Miller. Thanks Thank for stopping you. by. Of course. Thanks for having me. Fighting, Sometimes I Do, Never Met a Beer, and many others all heard on Country 90.5. Thank you. One of the things I love about you is when we see your, your promotional shots and things like that, you you always seem to be laughing. You seem to be having fun. You don't take yourself too seriously, do you? Not at all. No. <laughs> I don't think other people should either. <laughs> I, lo- it, I love that, though. Yeah, I'm just... I'm kind of like a like a young Chris Kringle, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm just a jolly guy, and honestly, like after every show that me and the band do, like most of my band members have other full time jobs. And like a couple of years ago, I was you know contracting and doing my full time job while yeah. still trying to do this music thing, uh, and so it's just like when we get to do this, like we always say best job in the world, you know. And so for us, we're like. How, why wouldn't we be happy and, and, you know, laughing and just joking around on stage too. And like, I get to play with my best buddies in the whole world. Like my, my band is my best friends. And so, uh, we just love that we get to do this and we're just having a good time with it. So, yeah. But before you did this, you had thoughts of getting into acting or you did some acting, correct? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sort of, but not really. I loved acting growing up, but, uh, like through high school, like music wasn't really my thing. Like a little bit, I picked up a guitar and I started kind of learn how to play and and uh, started playing in like church and stuff mostly for girls uh <laughs> i love that you're honest <laughs> yeah i wasn't sure about that jesus guy but the girls are cute uh and yeah that's kind of how i got into music but at the you know a lot of high school like i never took a music class in high school it was just it was always acting and i loved acting and i thought that might be something that i'd want to do one day and uh and then music ended up sticking so i stuck with that debut single pillow talking Comes out in 2019 on Christmas Day. Why Christmas Day? Because <laughs> I'm like Chris Kringle, you know? <laughs> Is that really? Like, was that by design or was no. it just a coincidence? No, uh, my label MDM has done uh, this thing where they re- release one of their artists on Christmas Day. as kind of like a Christmas gift to, to radio. And then you knew that, like, there was at least going to be a couple weeks before anybody would see it. But when they got back into the office, that would be one of the first emails that they'd see sort of thing. And so the point was basically to try to get ahead of the game and get music out the earliest that we could into the new year. And so I thought it was kind of weird that we were doing it on Christmas. It's like, okay, like I'm still listening to Christmas music. I'm not listening to my new single. Like I don't think other people are either. But uh, yeah, it was kind of weird at first, but then it ended up working out. And uh, yeah, we put out two songs on on Christmas. I think it was my first and, and my third song out. So but it works, I guess. Best present for you. Yeah, it sure was. I have to ask you about Wild as Her. So uh-huh. Morgan Wallen yeah. wrote the track. You do it. It's a great song. It's a hit on radio. And then a guy named Corey Kent comes out and releases it. Like, did you know that was happening? Did, you, did someone go, did you know there's another guy singing that song on the radio? How did that come together? <laughs> I found out on Instagram. I saw his version get posted by one of the writers, but the writers didn't even know that it was coming out. So like it was, it was a bit of an interesting thing. Um, but what also people don't know is there was a version before mine. And so it was done by a guy from Texas, Colby Keeling. And so the, the long story short is I got pitched the song like a couple, maybe three years ago, maybe even at this point. And uh, by Kelly Archer, who's she wrote my first song, Pillow Talking. She wrote I'll Be Over Me Too with me. She's uh, she's written uh, Back Drinking Whiskey, Another Mind with me, and and Wild Is Her. And uh, one of my songs that isn't a radio track was uh, You'd Really Hate Me Now. She wrote that one as well. She's been a really big part of my career, and uh, we're we're both sort of from the same town too, which is really cool. And she lives in Nashville for. I don't know, last 15 years or whatever it is, but she pitched me the song a while ago and it just, it wasn't a good time for me. We already had all these other songs we'd recorded, ready to go. And so we kind of said like, ah, like I love the song, but like I'm not going to hold on to it because we don't know when I could cut it. A couple years down the road, I'm writing with Kelly and Brett Tyler, who's another writer on the song. And um, they were like, hey man, this other guy cut it. Like, but it didn't go to radio or anything. So like, yeah. you know, yep. not many people really, at least especially in Canada, nobody knew of the song. So yeah, like, to us, it was a new song. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, it feels kind of weird that somebody else cut it. But like, you know, if it isn't going to disrupt anything, like whatever, I, I guess. And so 
uh, I still love the song, so I thought I'd put it out. And uh, but the tough thing was I got the Morgan Wallen demo sent to me because he sang it in my producer's studio on the mic that I Which is on. actually really, really cool. It is. And I was like, well, how the hell am I supposed to follow up a Morgan <laughs> Wallen vocal? But uh, we put it out and loved it, and it started blowing up, which was great. And then, yeah, I looked on Instagram one day, and I was like, this isn't my graphic. Wait, but this is my song. What? Who? This isn't me singing. <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> and so it came as a surprise to everybody, and we're like, oh. "What the heck?" And so, yeah, it was a month after I released my version that Corey Kemp put his out. Um, and obviously, it was like there was a bit of that tension there of like, "What yeah. the hell?" Like, that's that that's my song. Like, we got it at radio and everything yeah, too, yeah. and like, uh, and then it got to the point where it's just like, you know what? And people like online on TikTok and whatever, just like, it's this guy's song. No, it's this guy's song. And I'm just like, man, I got plenty of other songs. Uh, but For the record, we never played the Corey Kent version. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. But uh, it still went top 10 in, in, you know, Canada and went gold and everything. So I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. And a lot of people are singing the crap out of it when we're playing it live. And I actually ended up going to a sold out Corey Kent show in Nashville after his it yeah. went number one in the States and saw him play. And uh, it was a cool moment. And he's shaking the publisher's hand too, of being like, you know, great song guys. Yeah. It was good enough that there was multiple artists that wanted to cut it. Yeah. So for me, it's kudos to the writers that just knocked it out of the park. And uh, the two that I don't know Morgan at all. So the two that I know is Brett Tyler and Kelly Archer. And right. they're both just phenomenal writers. I love that I got to write with them and glad that they pitched me that song still too. So. I've been asking everybody this question through the weekend. What is the first song you ever wrote? And can you sing me a line from that song? Oh, uh, the first one that comes to mind was a song called I'd Rather Be Poor With You. That sounds like a country yeah. song. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Uh, I think the line was, I don't know how the melody went, Okay, but it, it went, uh, I'd, I'd give up a rich life, the fame and the spotlight. I'd rather be poor with you. And that's all I remember from all right. that. Well, that sounds all right. That sounds all right. Yeah. Um, and I was poor, so it doesn't really mean much. <laughs> Never Met a Beer has been a, a huge hit for you. Of course, uh, you know, it's doing so well. If you could only drink uh, one beer for the rest of your life, what beer would you pick? Oh, oh man, that's tough. And I'm going to ask Matt Lang the same question. So. <laughs> okay. Uh... I'd say I'm a big craft beer guy. Like I brew beer at home and stuff in my garage. Uh, but there's a craft beer by my house uh, that is, I'm pretty loyal to it. Camp Beer Company. They're awesome. All their beers are good. I brew with them sometimes too, uh, just for fun. Um, but for just like a beer across the board that you can get anywhere and drink anytime, probably MGD. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's in the name Miller. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> Right. I think my great grandpa stirred it in a barrel or right. something. <laughs> there's a there's a, a um, like a marketing thing there, a licensing thing for you for the Miller for the Miller, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I tried to make like a publishing company just for my own music that I'm writing, and tried to call it uh, Miller, it uh, Miller Time Publishing. Right. And I get shot down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get sued. The new single should have known better. So, at radio, you know, there's a phrase uh, out of the box. Yeah. Song comes in old days on a CD and you add it right into the box. And traditionally a lot of programmers will hold back. They'll say, yeah. well, let's wait, let's wait. This is one of the few songs that we at country 90.5 added out of the box wow. because we heard that song and we said, first off, it's a great up-tempo summer track, but I don't know if, if you had it in the back of your head, but this is a great modern day 90s song. It's got that nineties feel. Yeah, it does. And uh, it's funny. Cause like, when I got shown the demo, it was super heavy guitars, and I was like, oh, I don't know if this is my style. But, like, even the intro with, like, the down, down, and and down, it was like, okay, this is a bit heavy still. And then you get in the verse, and it's just, like, two-stepping sort of song. And I loved it. Uh, it just kind of reminded me of, like, a like a Brooks and Dunn sort yeah. of thing that they they do back in the day. And so, uh, yeah, I, I loved the song when I, when I heard it, and it was kind of like, I love it but I don't know if this is my style. And Matt also got pitched the song too. And I was like, me and him were both like, well, we're, we're not sure if it's either of our styles, but like, we both love the song. If we do it together, who cares? Like, it's just a fun song that we can do. And it, it's a bit honky tonk and like, it's, it's fun. 
And so, uh, yeah, we just decided we're good buddies and we're drinking buddies. And we're like, let's do a song about, you know, two buddies drinking beer. Why yeah. not? Yeah, yeah, that's country, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much for doing this. You're off to a phenomenal start. We love hearing your music on the radio, and uh, we're glad that you're back at Boots. Thanks. It's good to be back here. Yeah.